The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you want to get involved, please email us. The email address is feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada. And if you use that hashtag, extremely important for this week's show, use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. I am Mark Aflalo, joined every week by Stephen Scott. Stephen, how are you feeling this week? We're on the drive towards the holidays. I'm feeling good, Mark. This week, we are also joined by our friend, and co-host of Double Tap Canada, which can be heard every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on AMI-audio, Sean Priest. Sean, welcome back to the program. Oh, it's always good be to be back, Mark, and uh, hello, Stephen. Oh, hello. Gentlemen, when we were planning our end of year programming, I realized that we have this giant stockpile of questions from the audience, whether it be video questions, audio questions, email, you know, so many ways to get in touch with us, as I alluded to off the beginning of the show. They've texted us, they've tweeted us. People have questions, guys, and it's time for us, Stephen, to answer them. Yes, we're going to do our very best today to answer your questions. Of course, we get many, many questions. And as you say, on the TV show, on the radio side, so, uh, yeah, really glad we've got your questions. We're going to answer, well, hope to answer some of them today. We have brought Sean in to help us out. I'm not sure how much help he'll be, but we've brought him anyway. Nor am I. I'm sure we'll get some Android questions or some other questions that he might be useful at. Yeah. Um, guys, so let's get to it. Let's take a listen to this question from Glendon. Uh, my name is Glendon. I uh, was just listening to a Double Tap episode, and... In the, the conversation, it occurred to me, isn't there some way that blind people could have access to a directory alphabetical listing of all apps which are definitely user-friendly for the blind? Um, that would be really, really amazing, actually. I know Apple this, uh, does this and has a listing of, of some from time to time, but to actually have a directory where we could just uh, look up for whatever, I need a, an MP3 converter uh, to be able to find out which of all of them that there are is uh, the one I need to download. That would be uh, a fantastic resource. You would think Apple would do that by themselves. You know, they already categorize apps in, in times of gameplay and stuff. You'd think they have a list of just accessible apps, but but they do they do they not? Well, that's well, that's, well that's a bit of a sore subject. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Apple shouldn't allow an app in the App Store unless it is accessible. That's a whole different kettle of fish. Um, but of course, we've got different <laughs> platforms here. Apple Viz is great. They've got a great directory of user submitted applications and reviews and letting you know if they are accessible. But what about Windows apps? What about Android or Linux? you know whatever um and i actually don't know i mean it would be great if there was a an all-encompassing directory but i don't know of one well i mean the only one i know of is apple viz for the apple side i mean android i don't even know if that's still a thing do people still buy oh, these phones I, honestly time. there's no way to know <laughs> um but i i agree i think that apps in the app store and it's interesting when you say accessible apps glendon because what does that mean exactly does that mean an app that you can use, that you are certain you can use, or is it an app that's built specifically for blind and partially sighted people to make your experience more accessible of something? So I'm thinking of Be My Eyes or Ira, services that offer you accessible services, uh, because there's a difference there. And I think that if you go to somewhere like Apple Viz on the iPhone side, um, I think, uh, what was the one that they often go to? There is, a, there is an Android site, Sean. I'm sure we've been to it more than once. I've gone to laugh at it, but there is a, an Android well, there's, site. There's quite a few mailing lists and forums. You can find a mailing list yeah. uh, for anywhere. I mean, it's always a good thing to Google, you know, just do a Google search on uh, accessible Android apps or, or even... I do, I do love a mailing list in 2020. It just feels right there in, what, 1995. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right there. Brilliant. But they're still really active in the VR community, you know, and you can get really good information from them. And there is, there's forums out there, there's communities out there for everything. We've even got the Raspberry VI, you know, the Raspberry Vi forum trying to make that accessible. So there's lots out there. It's just a case of not in one place. This is Double Tap TV. We want to get your questions answered. So uh, email us feedback at ami.ca on 
on Twitter. We are at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag Ask Double Tap. We'll be back with some more of your questions in a moment. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI Audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you don't already know how to get in touch with us, super important this week, it's feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag Ask Double Tap. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott. And this week, Sean Priest. Guys, we are diving into questions that our audience has. How do we narrow it down to just a couple for this week's show? I do not know. Uh, where, where do you want to begin, Stephen? I mean, I've got so many questions here. You want to start with an audio one, shall we? Yeah, let's start with one of the audio ones, because I know we get lots of those in through the radio show as well. Okay, this is Amit, and he's asking about panic buttons. Oh. Hello, Double Tap. Long-time listener, first time proposing a question. My question is, I'm visually impaired. I have virtually no sight. I use an iPhone with voiceover. My partner has many health issues, including diabetes. There have been times when... She's had a hypo, which is when the blood sugar crashes really low and she can't sort of function or pick up a phone to call me or send me a message and I could be in another room or I could even be out of our home. And I was wondering if there was any kind of solution where rather than having um, some sort of wired in system that she could press a button and I would get a message, a pre-programmed message maybe, or just an alarm on my phone telling me that she needs my attention. Is there anything like that you could suggest so again, I'm totally blind, so I need something audible, and I use an iPhone with voiceover. Hmm, that's an interesting one. I mean, I instantly think of the fall detection on the Apple Watch, but that I don't think is enough, because what if the person didn't actually fall down, right? Yeah, well, that would be the first problem, yeah. You'd have to, you have to fall down, I guess, for that to be any use, right? But I, I think it's really interesting, because the iPhone and the Apple Watch do have a lot of technology in them to help you in an emergency. So I think about emergency SOS. Now I know that Amit says that in this case, his partner can't necessarily use a phone, but there are things you can do. For example, holding in that power button on your phone will actually give you access to emergency SOS. If you hold it in long enough, uh, eventually uh, it will start to contact your contacts, your emergency contacts. So that's really useful. Uh, the watch has similar functions to it, but as you say, of course, it has that fall detection, which let's not Let's not decry that too quickly because, yes, okay, you have to fall first, but at the same token, it is a wonderful feature if something does happen and an emergency occurs like that. And, of course, the phone, by detecting your fall, it, it waits a little time and then it will actually contact your emergency contacts. So, you know, you can actually use your smart devices you already own without having to look for some alternative option like a, a pendant solution or any of these specialist technologies, Sean? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's always important to look into the specialist, you know, sort of monitoring subscription model type panic buttons for um, you know, people with medical conditions. But there is stuff, as we said, off the shelf, with mainstream tech. Also, I would look at something like uh, if you've got smart speakers already, the Amazon Echoes, if you do buy some Echo Echo buttons. I mean, they're very good. You can set them up to uh, when they are pressed. They're a nice big button, like a game show buzzer. And when you do press them, you can set it that it will ring your phone or make an announcement on all the Echo speakers or even send an alert to a phone running the Amazon Lady A app. So, yeah, there are a few options there. It doesn't have to be uh, a costly experience as well. There's another option also on the smart speaker. You can set up a routine on the Echo that when you say a specific phrase, it'll do a bunch of different things. For example, call a loved one, uh, you know, ring the other speakers. So that's another way of doing it if you can't physically hit that button. The other thing I think is worth mentioning is the Amazon Echo Show, because what's wonderful about that is it has a screen in it. It also has a camera in there as well. So if, for example, a loved one wants to contact another or check in on someone, usually maybe someone who's older, maybe an older family member, you want to just check in with them, make sure they're okay, in case you aren't hearing from them, then you can drop in on Amazon devices now. Uh, this is a feature that's coming slowly through other devices as well, through the Google Home and through the Home Pods. But this is something which has been around on the Amazon Echo now for a while, pretty baked in as well. And what's good is you can get this 
easily accessed from any smartphone. So you don't have to walk around with a, an Amazon Echo Dot in your bag, you know, plug it in when you want to use it. <laughs> you know, you can actually just use your smartphone, summon the Lady A app and, you know, instantly drop in. So, you know, for very low cost, you can have something which gives you great peace of mind. Garth sent us in a video. This is something that you guys can do as well. Don't forget the email address, feedback at ami.ca. You can send videos, you can send voicemails, you can send lots of different things. So let's take a look at this video from Garth. Hey there, Double Tap. So I was going through my subscriptions in my Apple account and found I still have an active iTunes Match subscription. I'm wondering, is there any functionality, any benefit I get from having that subscription still, given that I do also have Apple Music? Are all the features that, and all the functionality that I get from iTunes Match, rolled up into Apple Music anyway? So I think I could, I could pick this one up, guys, because I actually was really quick to sign up to iTunes Match. What the service did was it looked through your entire local library and said, okay, if you've got a, a legal copy, a purchase copy of any of the music that's in your library, and we have a copy, meaning we being Apple in the cloud, they would match it up so you get the higher quality or the highest quality version of that song. Now, it got really confusing because there was the music subscription, then the iTunes Match subscription, but right now with the launch of Apple One, which is the all-encompassing subscription, everything seems to be rolled into one. So you get the functionality of iTunes Match built into I, uh, Apple Music, and now with Apple One, it's it's included across the board. I think they stopped marketing it as a separate thing when they started you know, blending things into Apple Music. Yeah, the, the pricing structure was really strange as well because you would have one price per year for iTunes Match versus iCloud Music Library, which you would pay for monthly versus your iCloud Storage. Thank goodness they've rolled this into one. Here's my criticism, though, of iTunes Match. So you're saying you have a legal copy of The Best of the Drifters, Mark. I know you have that album in your, your collection. Of course, it's Big. sitting right there at the top of my playlist. Exactly, yeah. it's right there. Um, if you have that album in your collection and you have that legal copy, what iTunes Match will often go and do, and I've noticed this personally, when I wanted my iTunes matched version of the Drifters album, I got the version sung by, I don't know, the Cleaners or whoever it was that had redone, <laughs> you know, the, the session version, if you like, of it because they didn't have that album. So they gave me an alternative album. They gave me a substitute album sung by the Drifters brothers and sisters, not them. Um, and uh, Did I mention it's not a perfect science? <laughs> it's not a perfect science, and, and, but if I'm paying for it, I want it to be a perfect science or at least it's close to it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there must be other ways to identify these albums, or at least just tell me it's not there. But what I want to be able to do is, in that case, upload my album. That's the bit that seems to be the, the bit between iTunes Match and iCloud Music Library. iCloud Music Library, you upload your album, whereas with iTunes Match, it gives you a version of the album. It matches up. Guys, we've got some more questions lined up, including uh, Louis the Luddite and uh, Kelly. This is Double Tap TV. We want to get your questions answered. So uh, email us feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag Ask Double Tap. We'll be back with some more of your questions in a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. Everybody seems to have questions, and we hopefully have answers that are helpful. Email us at feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. I am Marco Flalo again with Stephen Scott and Sean Priest. This week is here. Guys, we've got Louis the Luddite on deck, and he's got a question about upgrading to iOS 14. Hi, this is uh, Luddite, Louis the Luddite. I have an iPhone 6S Plus, and I don't know whether to update to iOS 14. In the past, I had an iPod that uh, Apple allowed to update to where voiceover was unusable, and I don't want to repeat that experience. Thanks a lot. Take care. You know, my experience, guys, on, on the older devices is that iOS 14 is actually pretty quick and pretty good and does really help across the board. So I don't think I'd hesitate. The only thing I always recommend to people is check that third-party software, those apps that you use, and make sure they are still compatible with the new operating system. I think for those with low vision, upgrading early or even upgrading just as it comes out is, is a smart move. Reason being, you want to have the latest operating system. You have to keep your phone up to date. It's not just about getting the latest features, it's about security as well. So that's really important to do.
But for someone who's using voiceover, my recommendation is always just give it a month. Give it a month to bed in, let all the errors and the issues happen. Because bear in mind, you've got issues with the voiceover itself. You've got issues with the operating system combining with voiceover. Then you've got those third party apps and compatibility issues. So with all of that combined, it can make, in some cases, your apps unusable. Whereas if you give it the month, just for the chance, and we're way past that now. So Louis, for you, it's time just to get it done, get it downloaded, get it installed, because it's fine. Uh, and you know, we're what, onto 14.2 at this stage. So, you know, we've moved on quite a bit and you're getting constant updates as we go along. Uh, you know, keep the updates coming, keep them going. What I would recommend people do though, and I would say this to anybody, is disable automatic updates. Update on your terms, but just don't leave it too long. No, absolutely. And it's not just a case of apps being unusable. It's a case of your actual device becoming unusable if the accessibility bugs that are introduced are that bad. Mm. You know, if our screen reader is um, f jumping around the screen and the focus doesn't work properly or the speech isn't working properly, it's akin to, you know, for a sighted user, so the, the screen keeps going off and on again. It, it can make the device really difficult to use. So when it comes to any update, no matter what the version, it's always best to hold back, wait to the next point release, you know, and wait to 14.1 or whatever, or next one's going to be 15.1. Wait for that next point release until the initial bugs have been worked out. And then uh, listen, just listen to the community and see what everyone else is saying. Guys, Carrie sent us a video about multi-room music. Hello. Just wondering if maybe you could recommend what, in your opinion, is the best solution for multi-room speaker systems or setups and Maybe why as well. Thanks. Bye. Oh, Stephen, you oh, want to I have one? a wry smile on my face, Mark. <laughs> I think you know what I'm going to say. I think you know that there's a fruit involved. How did I know? In this one, yes. Um, of course, I'm going to say Apple HomePod, right? And I know you might have thought I was going to jump in and say Amazon Echo, but I'm not because we're talking. No, I actually I thought you were going to jump in and say Sonos. Ah, yeah, well, yeah, okay, well, fair enough. Well, no, I decided to go down the Apple route. Why? Because first of all, it just of works. Um, it's brilliant. Fanboy. Uh, and you can have it everywhere. Not only that, you've got access to what's on your phone. Well, some of what's on your phone anyway. Um, you're able to transfer calls to the device, so you can use it as a hands-free speaker in a room, but you can also have it as a great multi-room speaker. It combines a lot of the functionality. Now, I'm talking obviously as an Apple guy, so if you're an Apple person, if you've got lots of Apple stuff, you're going to want a HomePod. If you don't, then maybe you will look into the Amazon Echo. But, you know, the only person who I tend to think would fill their homes with Amazon Echoes for, for music anyway would be Sean Priest because he has got absolutely no taste when it comes to quality music. I've got to totally disagree. I have to totally Thank disagree you. with you, Stephen. The I Sonos so. has been there yeah. first. Sonos is made for multi-room music. It lets you tie in any of your musical services, whether it be Awful. Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. Shaking my head. It is you perfect. Mark. You can pair them so you can have... I, I don't care what you're doing with your head. You, you, <laughs> Multi-room music is what Sonos was invented for, and to this day, their speakers are still one of the best on the they, market. They are good. And also one of the most expensive. Yeah, but OK, but look, you pay for quality, I, right? I'm not talking no. about price. I'm talking about multi-room no, solutions. Agree. She Which didn't ask what? anything no, about I agree price. With Mark. I think it's, it's important it? that we talk. If you're uh. talking quality, Sonos has got it without a shadow of a doubt. And I'd say second to that yes. is Apple HomePod, and third to that, maybe the Amazon Echo. But no, Amazon all the way. You've got a speaker for every every price point, every audio quality that you want. If you want to go, if you want to really go audio quality, right, you buy yourself a proper traditional set of speakers and you attach a Echo Dot. That, that will blow that will blow away even a Sonos, I'm telling you. Uh, look, when it comes to convenience and price, um, you've got to go the Amazon Echo way. They're beautiful. Guys, let's agree to disagree because I've got one last question from David who wants to know something about the best apps for voiceover on the iPhone. David Life here and uh, really love the show. Appreciate you guys. Wanted to ask uh, advice on the best calendar notes and um, to do um, email client any of those uh, applications 
iOS that would be a good fit for somebody who is uh, being forced into the world of voiceover um, over the last 10 years. Almost about to stop using my Mac zoomed up, but already using iPad Pro and uh, iPhone with voiceover for the last two years. Um, would love to hear your thoughts. And um, hey, hey, appreciate you guys. Well, first off, he's picked all the right kit to buy. I mean, you know, he's, he's done the right thing. Off the bat, you've bought Apple. Well done, sir. Well done. Uh, now we just have to get you to use it properly. Now, look, if you're going to use apps, I always say to people, start with the stock apps because the one thing about Apple is all of their apps are fully accessible. There's only one exception to the rule here, and that's the Notes app. Now, I don't know who was drunk at the time when they came up with the idea of the Notes app, but clearly they had had way too much to drink and they are, have created this app, which to my mind with voiceover is just ridiculously complicated to use. I don't know why, because every other app that Apple makes is brilliant. Calendar app's good. The Maps app is good. I mean, a Maps app, how complicated must that be to build? And it's even accessible compared to a Notes app, which is a list. But anyway, I don't get it. So look, my advice would be try everything, use everything that comes with the phone, except the Notes app. Wow, okay. I, I can't really argue with that. I think the native apps are, you know, because of the way Apple works, they are accessible and they are nice. There are a few uh, other ones I've heard of, and I, I don't really use the calendar or the uh, the Notes apps uh, that often anyway. I don't really have a need for them, but there is F Fantastical. Is that the one? Uh, Fantastical? Um, that one's very popular, and I know that is accessible, and people do rave about that one. That may be worth a look. Um, also, of course, you have um, the app called Drafts that does work very well, and it is totally accessible. Maybe a bit too much um, for just taking notes, but it is, um, it is a very nice app. That's Drafts. Uh, when it comes to taking notes personally, I use Just Press Record. It's, uh, it's great, especially if you have an Apple Watch. You can just double tap on the Just Press Record button and record a quick voice note, and it will also transcribe it, saves it to iCloud, nice and easy to find, and works really well. Guys, thank you so much for taking your time to be here with us. If you've got questions at home, don't be shy. Let us know. Email feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada. And use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Stephen, Sean, thank you for being here as we drive towards the holidays. I hope you have a safe one. On behalf of Stephen Scott and Sean Priest, I am Mark Aflalo. We'll speak to you again next week on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. Hosted by Mark Aflalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Attar. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Content review, Zachary Aflalo. Voice over, Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director production, Karen Nye. Director programming, Brian Perdue. VP content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020, Accessible Media Inc.